Now Michigan State sits on top of the nation, and Illinois not far behind. But Coach Soderberg's Badgers have not lost a step, while the Hawkeyes look like the winning kind. But in the Big Ten, there are other contenders like the Buckeyes and Lions and such. While the Boilermakers from West Lafayette think they have the winning touch, it'd be a mistake to dismiss conference powers like the Hoosiers and Michigan, too. While Dan Munson's Gophers and Northwestern's Cats know what they have to do. In short, what we're saying is nothing's decided and certainly nothing is clear. In fact, the sole thing that cannot be disputed is the Big Ten season is here. This afternoon, our Big Ten coverage opens in State College, Pennsylvania, where Jerry Dunn is hoping his Lions rebound from their trip to East Lansing on Wednesday night. They'll be hosting the New Look Iowa Hawkeyes. Then at 2 o'clock, they'll land just outside of the Windy City, where Bill Carmody, in his first year in the Big Ten, matches wits against the dean of the Big Ten coaches, Gene Cady. It's Northwestern and Purdue wrapping up today's Big Ten doubleheader. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Leeson. Welcome back to the Big Ten Studios. Now the bowls are in the books. It's time to concentrate on some Big Ten basketball. Can Michigan State win four straight conference titles? We'll answer that question nine weeks from now. The Spartans travel to Indiana tomorrow, the site where they suffered their last notch in the loss column. Since then, however, Tom Izzo's Spartans have reeled off 23 straight. Here's what's on tap for tonight. The 12th-ranked Badgers head to the Twin Cities to take on the Gophers at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Wisconsin takes a 10-game winning streak into Williams Arena, where Minnesota will try to rebound from their conference opening loss to Illinois. Now speaking of the Illini, they'll host the Buckeyes at 8 o'clock. It'll be Ohio State's first road game after a nine-game homestand where they won 7-2. Meanwhile, the Fighting Illini have just three losses on the season, two of them coming at the hands of teams ranked number one at the time. A lot of people think it's between Illinois and Michigan State this year. Well, Luke Recker and his new friends from Iowa City may have something to say about that. Sit back and enjoy another season of Big Ten Hoops. We'll see you back here in the studios at halftime. of Penn State entertain the Iowa Hawkeyes. Hi, everybody. Along with Bob Ford, I'm Tom Hamilton. Terrific matchup today. Iowa, in its Big Ten debut, ranked 23rd in the country. Penn State off to a terrific start, although they did lose their Big Ten opener Wednesday night at Michigan State. And what a matchup today in the backcourt. Two of the most prolific scores in the Big Ten. We're talking about Luke Recker for Iowa and Joe Crispin for Penn State. Luke Recker moves about as well as anybody in college basketball. Here coming off of a pick, he takes it to the hole for two, but you got to watch him from three point because he can nail it from the outside as well. Joe Crispin, you've got to know where he is even defensively. Here, Michigan State makes a miscue out front, thinks the ball's going to go out of bounds. Not so. Joe Crispin on the hustle play to the corner, and it's three points for the Nittany Lions. You've got to know where that guy is. And, Bob, they rank 1-2 in the Big Ten when you talk about scoring. And they shoot the ball so well from the outside. Everybody knows where they are offensively, so defensively, you've got to pick them up quickly. Well, this should be a terrific matchup today. This is also a game that features rebounding. The most ferocious rebounder in the Big Ten right now is Iowa's Reggie Evans. He is averaging 13 boards a game. We'll be back with today's game. And Penn State, a veteran ball club with maybe the finest all-around player in the Big Ten in Titus Ivory. Now look at our Dodge Keys. Well, one of the things that has to be worried about by uh, the Hawkeyes, they've got to have great perimeter defense to stop that three-point shooting. Also working on the youth on the road, they've got to stay uh, focused. Interior defense for Penn State and get team chemistry back that they had earlier in the season. And a turnover immediately on Joe Crispin, who had seven turnovers in the loss Wednesday night at Michigan State. A ball game, Penn State led by five with 12 minutes to go and ended up losing by 25. This is Reggie Evans. What a force he has become in his first year in the Big Ten. Now there's one of the problems for Penn State is what to do with Evans around the basket. He may spend a lot of time at the free throw line. They may not let him just roam free inside. Jossie Klein heard was stripped, recovered, lays it up with the left hand and ties this game. Both teams scoring from the inside, and uh, that may be an omen of what's to come, although Penn State can certainly light it up from three-point land. 
This game deadlocked to two here in the early going. Ron Zetcher, Randy Drury, and Glenn Mayborg are officiating through. And Luke Recker, not 100%, drains the triple. Recker playing with tendonitis in the right knee. And the Iowa coach is saying he's playing at about 70% efficiency. Ivory driving, had it deflected. This is John Crispin. Smith for three and ties the game at five. Interesting start to the ball game, and Penn State did have people back in the paint. Crispin was all the way below the three-point line when Wrecker hit the shot from the outside, and of course, Smith can shoot it from outside. Crispin's not the only guy that can get the job done. Penn State in the man defense. This game deadlocked at five here in the early going at State College. The smallest crowd on hand today. They expect around 10,000 in this building. That seats just over 15,000. Dean Oliver, the pull-up jumper. Finally, somebody misses. Jossie Klein heard, averaging nine rebounds a game, second in the Big Ten to Reggie Evans. And Crispin on the drive was bumped by Luke Recker. Crispin got his shoulder by. Anytime that happens, well, I tell you what, you're going to get the foul. Take a look at the uh, graphic on the screen with the scoring margin. The big thing is rebounding at the bottom, 7.2. Iowa uh, has more rebounds than their, their opponents, but Penn State has been trailing their opponents rebounding-wise, and that could be a big key in the ballgame. It's really the only difference in these two clubs number-wise. Bob is the rebounding. Offensive foul on Joe Crispin, his first. Iowa has, down through the years, been a traditionally good rebounding team. Really have Crispin trying uh, to get that same move he had a moment ago against Wrecker. It didn't work. Henderson in good shape and uh, draws the offensive foul, so the turnover gives the ball back to Iowa. So we're two minutes into this ball game, deadlocked at five. This is Jared Reiner, the freshman from Trip South Dakota with a miss. Evans and Smith scramble. And a jump ball, possession arrow favors the Hawkeyes. Both clubs hustling hard, ball goes to the court. This is what coaches like to see. Ball's on the floor, don't reach down and pick it up. Get down on the floor after it. Smith and Evans, and Evans wins that one. This is Evans, a junior college All-American a year ago. Luke Recker now against Crispin. Record to the baseline, airballed it, rebound, Klein Hurd. Last couple of times down, the Hawkeyes have gone one-on-one -on -one rather than getting into their offense. That will not do you any good when you're on the road. The switch, Ivory, on the give to Smith, and Smith was banged from behind. Nice recognition by Ivory on the double team out front that left Smith open, who made a good break to the basket forced the Hawkeyes into a position where they had to foul or give up an easy basket. Jerry Dunn in his sixth year at Penn State. They went to the final four in the NIT last season. This game still tied at five, nearly three minutes into it. That last foul on Reggie Evans is first. Penetrating Titus Ivory, offensive foul on Titus Ivory. It's gonna be tough in the paint, Steve Alford. Coming out of that Indiana background, well known for their defensive play, and he has brought that along with him as that's the second time that we've seen offensive fouls as the Hawkeyes are not afraid to give up their body defensively. Still tied at five. We've played three minutes. Iowa, even Steve Alford saying, better than he expected at this point in the season, and that's one reason why Dean Oliver doesn't get a lot of recognition, but he's one of the better point guards in college basketball, Bob. When he really gets it going, the Hawkeyes are just almost impossible to stop. He's good from the outside, and he will penetrate. How about when that guy gets it going? Nobody can stop Joe Crispin if he gets hot. And Penn State with its first lead on the triple by Crispin. Evans attacking the glass, the miss. Smith on a breakout. Crispin to Ivory, spots up for three. Jared Reiner, the rebound for the Hawkeyes, who trail eight to seven. And Oliver is fouled, and that's another critical foul on Titus Ivory, his second, a guy they have to have on the floor. 
really wasn't a good foul. The ball is uh, 25 feet from the basket, and he tried to, to cut off the offensive player going to the sideline. And you cannot make contact in college basketball away from the action anymore. I mean, even though the, the basketball is moving, you can't go contact people and bump them off their stride like you used to, and the guys are having a hard time adjusting to that. Well, in the game with Michigan State, Turned dramatically Wednesday night for Penn State when Titus Ivory went to the bench with his fourth personal foul. Now he's on the bench with two fouls. Wrecker the miss. Crispin has a two on two. He'll pull up and take the three and drains it again. Joe Crispin does that, Bob, as well as anybody in the college game. He's a good passer as well, and, and that really helps him out on that shot because you don't know whether to get up tight on him or back off and try to stop the pass to the inside. Kind of in a catch 22. Penn State sizzling from the field in the early going, leading 11 to 7. Crispin with two triples. Wrecker gets another air ball, the rebound and put back by the freshman out of Iowa City, Glenn Worley. 11 to 9, Nittany Lions. Four and a half minutes into this one. Crispin gets free. Pass deflected. Out of bounds, it belongs to Penn State. So Joe Crispin who comes into today's game averaging 22 points a game has already nailed two from beyond the arc. Take a moment to thank our corporate partners. Cooper Tires, a lot of mileage for the money. Cooper Tires, drive on and Kemper Funds. Long-term investing in a short-term world. Penn State with the basketball and an 11-9 lead. 15-15 to play in the first half. Klein hurt on the baseline. This is a freshman, Jamal Tate. Crispin, four on the shot clock. One on the shot clock, just did get it off. That's a shot clock violation. Good defense for Iowa. Nice job by the Hawkeyes. And it looked like Penn State was a little lost offensively, what they wanted to get done. And then they got into a situation where they had to force one up real quick. And uh, that'll, that'll help the Hawkeyes as they try to get back in this one. Hawkeyes down a deuce. Worley's pass deflected out to Sonderleiter. He's another freshman. Iowa has five freshmen that play significant minutes. This is Reggie Evans away from the basket, and he's called for traveling. That's not where Iowa wants him to have the basketball. They were really trying to isolate him down low. The other four players were totally away from his side of the floor. They got him the ball low, but then Penn State forced him out away from the basket. He needs to give the ball up at that point. Both ball clubs, through the course of the non-conference campaign, did a pretty good job protecting the basketball, but Penn State has already picked up four turnovers here in the early going. John Crispin with the entry to Klein Hurd. Nice fake, Klein Hurd doesn't get it to fall. Evans had it, lost it, and recovered by the Hawkeyes. Sonderleiter and the Penn State fans thought there should have been an offensive foul. Nice feed, Evans. That's what Iowa has to do more. They've got to get Evans some touches on the inside. Most of their shots have come from medium range. John Crispin gets by Rex and gets the basket on the foul. And Bob, right there, you see where Luke Recker is really bothered with his lack of quickness now because of the, the knee injury. It really bothers him some. Here's a look just a moment ago. Nice pass down inside to Evans, who needs to be a little more sudden. Boy, that extra bounce will get you in trouble later on in the Big Ten season. There you see the problem you were talking about. Crispin takes it to the bucket, and Recker was just a step slow moving to his left. John Crispin. Nine points a game for the 6'2 sophomore out of Pittman, New Jersey. The Crispin brothers earlier this season down in Rupp Arena. Penn State shocked Kentucky and the Crispins combined for 57. Joe had 31 and John had 26. Evans offensive foul. He knew it. Good defense. When Evans catches the ball away from the basket, he's not nearly as effective as he is when he catches down low back to the basket. And Penn State did a nice job of taking advantage of that. And now Reggie Evans, so critical to the Iowa attack, has two personal fouls, four on the Hawkeyes as a team. 
14 to 11, Penn State up. 13-20 left first half. Marcus Banta, the sophomore, takes the jumper, the miss. Tyler Smith kept it alive for the Nittany Lions. John Crispin using the screen. Tough shot, rebound, whirling. And here come the Hawkins. Dean Oliver, the pull-up three. Got it! And this game is tied. Both of these teams very good on the quick down situation, either on the three-pointer making the nice pass to the inside. Joe Crispin fouled in a basket again. There's Oliver a moment ago, comes down, nobody picks him up. Goes ahead and takes that nice shot from the outside and nails it. And then just a moment ago, Crispin going to the basket. Not only an outside threat, he gets down inside, you bump him. He will put the ball in the basket. Great body control here. He took a pretty good bump, but nice soft shot off the backboard. Dean Oliver picks up his first, and you look at Joe Crispin, who's off to a terrific start. Crispin with eight points already. Make it nine. And Penn State leads it 17 to 14. 12.40 to play, first half from State College and the Bryce Jordan Center. This building now five years old. Sander Leiter, kick out to Worley. Worley can shoot the three. On the baseline, laying it up and in is Ryan Hogan, the transfer from Kentucky. Nice baseline move, just really found an opening in the defense. And both teams have been doing a good job to the baseline with the back door. A moment ago, John Crispin was open, but they missed him. Blocked by Worley, run down by Hogan. Both these ball clubs go 11 deep. So you'll see a lot of fresh bodies today. Hogan deflects it to Scott. This is Worley for three. Freshman rims it, rebound Hogan, great hustle. Sonderleiter driving the baseline, and he was bumped on the drive by B.J. Bosco, his first. And the foul will be the fifth on Penn State. So an entertaining start to this ballgame. 11.46 left in the first half. Penn State with a one-point advantage. Out of a basketball game with two teams that are pretty evenly matched, the Hawkeyes have not done a very good job of getting Evans into the flow of things. He hasn't gotten the ball down low, thus not into the ball game. So it's been very, very even, and rebounds really haven't been a factor yet. And now both Evans and Ivory are on their respective benches with two personal fouls and a long way to go here in the first half. Oliver trying to get by Watkins. This is Worley. Scott, another freshman. Oliver again on the drive. Finds the freshman, Scott overlaid it. Bosco with a strong rebound. Penn State looks like they came in determined to do a good job on the backboard. They've been very aggressive to the ball. Klein heard the miss, but a bump inside. And it's on Scott Witkowski, his first personal. That'll be the sixth on Penn State. Well, Bob, on Wednesday night when they lost to Michigan State, Jerry Dunn's club was out-rebounded by 18. Now, Michigan State will do that to a lot of folks, but you can't win with that kind of uh, disparity in rebound. You really can't. You've got to be very aggressive to the backboard, and if you have a problem rebounding, then you've got to work on your technique of blocking out and then going to the basketball. But it takes five guys to do that. If the three-man or the two-man doesn't block out, that guy goes right to the board on you. 11 minutes to go, first half. Iowa with the ball, down a point. Wrecker for three. Got a good look, but he missed it. And Wrecker struggling with a shot here in the early going. Hogan with a rebound and miss. And then Hogan with a foul, trying to follow it up. First on Hogan, and that'll put Penn State in the one and one. Wrecker got a pretty good start, but as you said, he has really cooled off. Nice job by Hogan on the inside to get the rebound. But there's that good inside position. Nice yep. job by Vosco to get nice position on the inside. Then it was the weak side guy, the three guy, or the two guy coming inside to try to knock the ball away, but he got all arm and no basketball. So Penn State not yet in the one and one. The next foul on Iowa puts the Nittany Lions at the stripe. And Jerry Dunn's club, the best free throw shooting team in the Big Ten. 
John Crispin on the wing. This is Klein Hurd. Almost traveled, did travel. Again, the uh, Nittany Lions just a little out of sync in what they wanted to do. Klein Hurd had a nice idea to go to the bucket, but the Hawkeyes shut it off by clogging the paint. So Iowa, once again, a chance to regain the lead. Five turnovers on the Nittany Lions has hurt their cause here in the early going. Scott pulls his way inside and scores. He played on a state championship team last year in East Lansing with Marcus Taylor, the standoff point guard for Michigan State. Scott is so strong around the basket. Looks a little like a linebacker with his build and takes good advantage of it here. Just rolls right in, protects the ball. Right-handed jump hook softly up there and curls its way into the bucket. And his first bucket put Iowa back on top halfway through the first half. And now Penn State at the line for the one and one. And Penn State usually cashes in when they go to the stripe. 75% free throw shooting team. And John Crispin misses the front end. Almost a cute. <laughs> That's almost always the case. Ryan Hogan lost it momentarily. This is Scott spinning inside. Reiner gets tangled up. Who's basketball? A holding foul called on the Hawkeyes, Ryan Hogan. That'll be his second. And now Penn State will shoot the one-on-one -on -one once again. Penn State has done a nice job off the ball defensively, being able to step into the passing lane or the cutting lane. It's exactly what happened there. A couple of nice moves made by the Hawkeyes, but there was a Penn State defender each time to shut it off. Bad pass, and uh, the foul is created. 9.47 to go here in the first half. And already people on the bench because of foul difficulty. The key guy for Iowa, though, is Evans. Without Evans, Iowa is a very average rebounding team. Bob, he's the difference for Iowa on the boards. He's 13 a game, and nobody else is above four a game. He's such a presence on the inside. A very big young man. Broad shoulders, strong forearms, strong chest. And when he goes after the ball, it's his, no question. So Penn State twice has missed the front end of the bonus, but Nittany Lions still have a chance to regain the lead. This is Joe Crispin feeding Klein Hurd for the lead. That's what Crispin does so well. The defense looks for him to stop the three-pointer, and then the cutter, Klein Hurd, comes right down the middle. The pass is delivered. So Penn State back up a point, 19-18. Record tries to give Iowa the lead back. Boy, he just has not been able to get the shot to go down here in the first half. Crispin is bumped. Fans wanted a foul. Crispin will take the shot. And does anybody do that backup jumper better than Joe Crispin? He is on fire from the outside. And it was one of the problems that the Hawkeyes thought about is how are we going to stop this perimeter game that Penn State has? And another whistle away from the ball. We have another foul on Iowa. Penn State has just been doing some outstanding things with the basketball. Here's a couple of looks at what they've been doing here. Everybody looking for Crispin. What's he going to do? Is he going to get the shot? No. Great pass inside. Klein Hurd with a finish on the flush. Then he makes the same move, steps back, and hits the jumper from three-point. What do you do with that? You just pray if you're the other coach that he's not hot. Jerry Dunn has seen a lot of that from Joe Crispin, and Steve Alford was saying about Joe Crispin as Vosco hits the front end. Alford said about Joe Crispin, he reminds him a lot of Scott Skiles, which is a pretty good comparison, and, and another guy that, that he compared him to was Mark Price, the former Georgia Tech star and NBA star. Boy, when you get compared to Skiles and Price, that's pretty good company. Penn State with its biggest lead. 24 to 18, eight and a half minutes left in the half. Penn State has scored seven unanswered. Joe Oliver can't stop the drought. Evans back in for Iowa, but not able to get that rebound. John Crispin from 30 feet, got it! Look out, here come the Crispin boys. Holy smoke. Said one Crispin's bad enough. Now I've got the other guy hot. John Crispin.
Crispin's three-pointer gives Penn State the big lead. Penn State has opened up its biggest lead, 27 to 18, 809 to go, and Iowa's got to find a way to cool off the Crispins. Got to get up close to them. They've done such a good job of not only hitting the three, but making the great pass to the inside off of cutters while the defense was trying to shut down the perimeter game. Now Reggie Evans is back in playing with two personals for Iowa. And that'll be something to keep an eye on as Oliver got by Crispin with the left hand. He laid it up and in. Great strong move by Oliver going against Smith on the inside. A guy that's about eight inches taller than he is, but he took it right over the top. Oliver has seven. Crispin lost it. And it belongs to the Iowa Hawkeyes. 7.37 left here in the first half from State College. Penn State still with a seven-point advantage over the Hawkeyes. Evans on the high low, and Reiner was bumped from behind. That foul will be on Klein Hurd. That'll be his first. Sixth on the Nittany Lions. Big guys have really struggled with the play in the post in terms of what you can do with defense. Once the ball is inserted into the post, you have got to back off. You can't have hands or leg against them like you used to root them out and hit them with a forearm. Now you've got to back off, and the offensive player really has a pretty good chance to score. Penn State with a seven-point lead. 7-10 seven, left first half. Oliver spinning inside. Tough shot. Rebound Crispin, and he got fouled. And you send him to the line, and it's almost automatic. Glenn Worley picks up his first. Joe Crispin, though, not shooting free throws this year as well as he has in the past. He's the best free throw shooter in the history of this school. 89% for his career, but only 80% this year. It's too close. <laughs> Take two steps back, he'd be great from the top of the key. <laughs> Joe Crispin has one of the great strokes in college basketball. And Having an electrifying start here in the first half, he has 13 as Penn State leads 28 to 20. Think about Joe Crispin. He has a heart the size of State College, Bob. He does not back down from anything or any game situation. Record trying to get free. Finds Worley on the wing. Spinning inside. The freshman scores. Nice move. Did he get away with one? Looked like he might have had an extra step on the inside. At least the coaching staff of Penn State thought so. Joe Crispin, he's open. So is Tyler Smith. Smith missing the three, and Evans climbs the ladder for the rebound. Iowa down seven. Six and a half minutes left, first half. Well, Reggie Evans not seeing the ball much on the offensive end. Really done a nice job of having the offside player step back into the paint and make it very difficult to find a passing lane. Eight on the shot clock. Duez Henderson on the drive. Shot it too hard. Another scrum. Penn stayed up with it. Here comes Crispin. His brother on the right wing for three. And a whistle. We have a tangle. On the other end of the floor, and Ron Zetcher called a foul stopping play. Glenn Worley called for a holding foul, his second, and double bonus time for Penn State. Sometimes players just get all tangled up around the basket, and I think that's what happened there is two or three guys go to the floor and trying to get untangled. You get a hold of an arm or a leg or something, and bang, you've got a foul. I was watching Evans at the other end. And he was really working hard around the basket and frustrated at not getting the ball. If he's not careful, he's going to pick up that third foul. Yeah. And they can't afford that, no. they being Iowa. Klein Hurd, a 70% free throw shooter. The 6'8 senior out of Houston. He'll get two here, double bonus. 
Penn State has been a surprise here in the early going. And Jerry Dunn said they're a little bit better ball club than he even anticipated. He credits it to team chemistry. He said this is about as good a chemistry as we have had on a team in his six years. It's amazing what that can mean, Bob. It means so much if the guys like one another, if they go to the movies together, if, if they have some classes together. It just makes all the difference in the world. A lot of times you'll have a team that they don't see each other except for when they're on the court, and that makes it very difficult. And because of that chemistry, Jerry Dunn said we've played more like a team, making the extra pass. And it's been evident here today, Penn State with a nine-point lead over Iowa, under six minutes to play first half. This is Henderson against Bosco. Blocked by Klein Hurd, but a foul on Bosco. Henderson will shoot two. Second foul on B.J. Bosco. It's always nice to have that shot blocker back there that can step up and help out if an offensive player gets around. That time Klein Hurd looked like he climbed a ladder to go after it. <laughs> Duez Henderson, he's a 6'7 junior out of Detroit, played at River Rouge High School. And won a state championship there with Ohio State guard Brent Darby. It's amazing when you look around the Big Ten, how many high school teammates are now opponents of each other in Big Ten play. And many times they've played together somewhere in an AAU team. Yeah. It's almost at this point nationally that everybody knows everybody else <laughs> because they're going to these big tournaments all around the country and playing against each other in high school. Penn State with an eight-point lead. And a whistle away from the ball. And the foul is going to be called on whom? Egekasi. Endu Egekasi, the 6'7 redshirt freshman with a blocking foul. And we will get the one and one situation now for the Hawkeyes. 31-23, Penn State leading Iowa with 536 left first half. We talked about it at the outset. The top two scores in the Big Ten coming into this one. Luke Recker has really struggled. Joe Crispin's been on fire. Recker has moved pretty well offensively, but he's forced his shots some. Shots coming early, and that could be a result of that knee being just a little bit sore. He's off balance just a hair. As you said, Crispin has been unbelievable, not only with his scoring ability, but the fact that he's hitting other people and getting assists as well. Luke Record, a standout for two years at Indiana, transferred to Arizona, was there one semester before transferring to Iowa. And Recker makes it a six-point game. Penn State with the lead in the ball. Klein Hurd. Jump pass inside, drawing the foul once again was Edgar Casey. And he'll shoot a pair. That was a nice look by Klein Hurd to Ega Casey. Normally, if you come into the middle, the big guy with the ball, you would think he's going to go ahead and put it up. But he saw the opening down low, and Ega Casey made a nice move to the bucket before he was fouled. Ega Casey is a 6'7 freshman out of Augusta, Georgia. And he is not just a basketball player. It's supposed to be two shots, and he'll get another. He is an honor student. He is a Eagle Scout. And Endu Ega Casey has also written children's books. They haven't been published yet, but he's written a number of books, has a lesson in each one of the books for the kids. Talk about a well-rounded individual. It's Endu Ega Casey for Penn State. But he missed both free throws. And he's now two for 10 for the year at the free throw. Rod Thompson for three. Not there again. Klein Hurd snatches it away. Five minutes to go. Penn State up six. Crispin on the run. Finds Klein Hurd. Return pass deflected out. It belongs to Iowa. Another turnover on the Nittany Lions. As a coach, you would have liked to see Crispin clear out once he threw that ball to Klein Hurd. He's not going to do very much good down there in the short corner. All he did really was clog it up because that's the way that Klein Hurd was going. Would it not be for the eight turnovers, Penn State would have a bigger lead than they do. 31-25, Nittany Lions. Dean Oliver against Crispin. This is the freshman, Sonderleiter, lays it up and in. He's a freshman out of Des Moines. And it's a four-point Penn State lead. Crispin double-teamed and fouled out front by Sonderleiter. Not a smart play. 
He wanted to step out there defensively and, and just caused Crispin to go a different direction, but he stuck his arm out, and that's where he really got in trouble. A moment ago, though, offensively, makes a nice fake to the baseline and goes strong to the bucket and gets a good one. Unfortunately, on the other end, he turned it right around and committed the foul. Joe Crispin has missed one shot all day and has 15 points. His high this season, 36 against Pitt. As Sonderleiter heads to the Iowa bench. Crispin had a stretch last year where he had back-to-back 31-point -back games in the Big Ten. And the senior has given Penn State a six-point lead with 4.27 left. 16 for Joe Crispin, and he gets a well-deserved break. Brandon Watkins replaces him. Watkins is the heir apparent to that point guard position. Very, very quick young man has had the good luck to be working under Crispin the last couple of years. Great feed from record to the freshman Reiner. Penn State's lead is down to four, nearing the four-minute mark. Watkins, the left-hander, off the glass, missed it. It still belongs to Penn State. Joe Crispin, when he gets hot, he puts up points like nobody else in college basketball. And those are some of the best efforts for Joe Crispin. And he may be adding to that list here today. Wrecker for three, and that's a long-range three. Wrecker missed again. Vasco kicked it out of bounds. Iowa dodges a bullet as Vasco hits the floor hard. So 3.52 left here in the first half from the Bryce Jordan Center. Steve Alford's Hawkeyes still haven't found a way to stop Joe Crispin. On the shot clock, Crispin from the corner. Finally missed a shot. Thompson the rebound. Nice job by the Hawkeyes to cover up everybody else and force Crispin to create a shot from the corner, which was not a particularly good one out of that offense. Maybe the first bad shot Crispin's taken all day. Oh, nice feed. High, low, Reiner to Thompson, a goal 10. And Rod Thompson, who's kind of been a forgotten man this year, but had 11 points off the bench in the Hawkeyes last game, has come off the bench and contributed here today as well. Seeing a lot more teams pulling everybody up to the top of the key and then doing the back door, kind of like a 1-4, very, mm -hmm. very quick at it. UCLA is very good at that. John Crispin off balance three. Klein heard what a putback. His feet never touched the floor. And Penn State back up by one. Very athletic move, and now you see why Evans needs to be on the floor for the Hawkeyes to get those rebounds. Good point, Bob. They really miss his presence. Two and a half minutes to play in the half. Iowa with the basketball, down a point. This is Wrecker against John Crispin. Ten on the shot clock. Dean Oliver, who's had a sizzling half, almost got another three. Klein heard another rebound. He's ruling the backboards on both ends. He averages nine rebounds a game, second only to Evans in the Big Ten. This is Klein Hurd. Nice move inside, couldn't get it to fall. And the basketball belongs to Iowa with just over two minutes to play. So Iowa's basketball down a point. And don't forget at halftime, we'll head to the Big Ten studio. Mike Gleason and the gang will bring you highlights from 11th ranked Seton Hall and 20th ranked Georgetown and number two Stanford, as well as number 15 Arizona. Mike Gleason will have all of that and more. Dean Oliver, nice look inside. Scott couldn't finish. There's the other freshman Reiner with a putback. Nice inside play by the Hawkeyes that time. Tell you, Thompson's making some nice moves around the basket. He goes away and then comes right back to the ball. And with the good size of Reiner in there, if he misses it, there's somebody there to clean up the mess. And Crispin stripped, but a foul. And it's a foul away from the ball. And it goes against the Hawkeyes in two free throws coming up for Penn State. A holding foul, and the freshman Jared Reiner, his first. 
Steve Alford not convinced with 128 to play. His Hawkeyes up a point. They've trailed by as many as nine here in the first half. And Alford was concerned, Bob. Their first Big Ten game, it's on the road. He has five freshmen that are playing. Uh, the only real senior that contributes is the point guard, Dean Oliver. He said, you don't know how kids react, even the junior college transfers. You really don't, but I think this group has done a pretty good job. Reiner being one of the better big men coming yeah. in as a freshman around the country. So they've got a lot of weapons. It's just a matter of keeping them together. And they're lucky here today that this is not a packed house, yeah. as it will be in another week when the students come back to town, because that can make it really difficult, especially on scoring runs. That's a good point, Bob. And the Penn State students are coming back this weekend, but most won't get back until tomorrow. So if you're traveling in this part of the country, tomorrow's not a good day to travel in State College. Inside, Scott puts the Hawkeyes back up, and this freshman playing well in his Big Ten debut. He has four. And the reserves for Iowa have done a great job with Evans on the bench. Iowa up 38-36 with a minute to go. This is John Crispin against another freshman boy. Crispin, another off-balance shot, but the Crispin shoot off-balance shots better than maybe anybody. They really do a nice job of squaring their shoulders, even though they're off-balance, to get a nice shooting position to put the ball up on the backboard. Game tied at 38. Well, the Crispin's father said they played one-on-one -on -one against each other when they were kids, but they could never finish a game. It always ended in a fight. Reiner. Offensive foul on the 6'11 freshman out of trip, South Dakota. He picked Iowa over Connecticut, one of the top recruits in the country. But now he's picked up two quick ones. And that's a freshman mistake of not understanding in that position with Smith on him, who's smaller and quicker, that a move to the basket's not going to work for him. Be better to throw the ball back outside position with your back to the basket and then get a reinsertion pass. So this game deadlocked at 38, and Penn State can play for one. 18 seconds to play in the hand. Penn State looks content now to play for that last shot. Either take a lead or go tied into the locker room. Crispin for three, almost airballed it. Smith with a putback. So Tyler Smith with an offensive rebound and a putback has given Penn State a two-point lead here at halftime at the Bryce Jordan Center. That knee. Hawkeyes off to a terrific start, ranked 23rd in the country, 11-2, their first Big Ten game of the campaign. Steve Alford's club with impressive wins over Tulsa and Iowa State. Jerry Dunn's club shocking Kentucky in Lexington as well as beating Temple. Penn State at 9 and 2 overall, 0 and 1 in the Big Ten. You could almost hear uh, Coach Dunn in the locker room saying, fellas, you got to play another 20. <laughs> Let's not have a repeat of what happened up in East Lansing. On Wednesday night, Penn State led Michigan State by 11 at half and lost by 25. Klein heard the miss, but the rebound by Klein heard an easy deuce. Well, that's a smart play by Penn State. Get the ball inside immediately to Klein heard with Evans on him. See if you can get number three. Evans playing with two personals and Klein heard now 11 points, eight rebounds. The entry pass down low and the layup for Wrecker. Maybe that gets him going. It's a move that he does very well. He can get in around the basket. He's very tricky with the basketball. Very difficult to block his shot. Ivory for three. And over the back, Evans almost picked up a foul there. Penn State maintains possession. This is John Crispin, the lob to his brother. <laughs> and Oliver deflected it out of bounds. Thought he was going to go for the slam. Here's a look a moment ago. Nice work by Kleinherd. Gets the rebound, puts it back in the bucket. Notice that Evans backed off. He did not come after the basketball at the uh, end of that play. Penn State up to Joe Crispin penetrates. Nice dish to his brother. And now John Crispin has 10. So the Crispins have 26. And Penn State leads 44 to 40. Who has Henderson? 
This is Evans. As Bob mentioned, only three shots in the first half for Evans. Henderson on the other baseline. Rims out. Reiner, the big freshman, lost it. Tyler Smith up with it for Penn State. Titus Ivory to John Crispin, who blows by everybody with a roll. John Crispin, the follow. Not quite. And rebound finally grabbed by Evans. Evans only three rebounds in this game as Reiner shuffled the feet. It's a matter of recognizing who's coming down the middle. I want to give the big guy the ball on the move at the free throw line. He needs to be another step down. It's just too far for him to have to dribble that ball to the court. Little guys get in there and steal it, and he couldn't make the long step. John Crispin now with Wrecker on him. Dean Oliver has shifted over to Joe Crispin. Nice dish to Smith. By the Crispins, you know all about their shooting ability, Bob, but that's the other thing. They pass so well on the run. They really do. They see the floor very well, and they're recognizing Evans' problems. He's not being as aggressive defensively. He turned his head that time, and Smith is wide open. Penn State back up by six. Another travel. And all of a sudden, Iowa can do nothing right on the offensive end as Sean Sonderleiter is going to come into the ballgame for Jared Reiner. Freshman for freshman. Steve Alford had a top five recruiting class a year ago. He has another top five recruiting class. I'm not talking Big Ten, top five in the country. So he is getting it done in a hurry in Iowa City, but you're also going to have to live with some of those young mistakes. Tyler Smith against Sonderleiter. And a rebound by Evans. Oh, did he get up there? Oliver spinning, shooting, off balance, but foul. Titus Ivory, his third. That's critical for Penn State. Tough break for Ivory, who lost his footing. Oliver made a spin move that just took the feet right out from under Ivory. And as he tried to recover to get his hands up on the jump shot, he caught the forearm. When any question about the foul, he put a, nope. put a hand on him. And uh, tough break. They may have to play without him for a while. Jerry Dunn calls Titus Ivory the heart and soul of this Nittany Lion club. He can do everything. Rebound, score, good defense, a terrific passer. But they need him on the floor. As Dean Oliver with 10 points at the line where he's a 74% free throw shooter. Must have been a violation on the first one, so he's getting... Oh, actually, they're calling it a three-point shot. I beg your pardon. So three free throws. He's been a four-year starter at Iowa City. Dean Oliver out of Mason City, Iowa. All the talk the past few years, and rightfully so, about the team Cleves and Scooney Penn. But Dean Oliver's a good one as well. Klein Hurd against Sonderleiter. That's a mismatch. There's what Steve Alford was talking about with young people. Notice that the Nittany Lions have isolated Klein Hurd down low on Sonderleiter. They're trying to get those young folks in foul trouble, make them make a mistake, and they're just not ready to go against guys like Klein Hurd yet. You know, another six or seven weeks in the Big Ten, maybe so, but not right now. Two free throws for Klein Hurd, who has 11 points in the game. And now Penn State a five-point advantage as the freshman Glenn Worley in for Sonderleiter. Klein Hurd, when he came out of Houston, he was a top 50 recruit in the country. But first three years at Penn State, not really a star. But this is his senior year, and he's having a big year. 13 points, nine rebounds a game. And, Bob, he's been terrific here today. He's playing very hard around the basket. I think he's up for the ball game going against Evans. Yeah. He's excited about them. I think Evans is excited about playing against him as well, but it's Kleinhardt that's having the big day. And Penn State leads by six. 16-40 left in the second half. Oliver against Crispin. Oliver got a great look. Crispin backed away. And ball knocked out. It still belongs to the Hawkeyes. Kleinhardt said, yep, I touched it. Hawkeyes are not getting the ball to Evans quickly. He's open, but they're faking or thinking and then trying to throw the ball in later. By then, he's covered. He's got to be very quick with that insert pass. Smith is doing a great job defensively. 
but Penn State has taken Evans out of this game. Wrecker got it to drop. So he's got two buckets here in the second half. And Luke Wrecker now with nine points. 48-44 Penn State. Ivory against Henderson. Henderson left his feet, picks up the foul. Ivory with the great head and shoulder fake and then the move to the baseline. Henderson was just left without any help out front. And all he could do was reach out and grab. First foul on Henderson, second on the Hawkeyes. What a great play off the inbounds. Klein Hearn with a jam. And Penn State up six. We are four minutes into the second half. This is Worley, the freshman out of Iowa City with a miss. Evans, he is a man when he gets his hands on the ball. And that's what the Hawkeyes need. They need him inside, cleaning up the messes when the ball doesn't go in, and that's what he does so well. This is Tyler Smith. Nice touch pass to Klein Hurd. Klein Hurd has everything going his way on the inside. The young freshman Worley now guarding him. And they just have not been able to find anybody to stay with him. Evans was fouled on the double team. Jossie Klein Hurd with 17 points today. Great touch pass from Tyler Smith. Klein Hurd with a dunk. Penn State with a lead. They're not getting off of they're not getting offensive rebounds and second chance opportunities. And that makes a big difference if you're used to having 10, 12, 14, 16 points a game from that. Iowa will inbound it. Wrecker off the inbounds pass got fouled in a basket. The foul on John Crispin and Luke Wrecker is starting to light it up. And he, like Joe Crispin, can put up 20 points in the blink of an eye. He's taking advantage of his size over John Crispin. Just a quick jump shot down on the baseline, and that's the second shot he's hit from that same area. So I think they're going to be looking for him, see if uh, John Crispin can come up with a defense. Luke Recker, his return to the Big Ten. And the Indiana native has responded with 12 points. But of those 12 points, Wrecker has seven of those in five minutes here in the second half. Crispin for three. Got it! That one came from the parking lot. He was two steps behind the line and very sudden with it. 19 for Crispin. Oliver on the drive, took it to the hole and drew the foul. Boy, Iowa doesn't waste any time on the attacking end, do they? Oliver has no fear of taking the ball to the hole. I mean, he goes very, very hard to the basket. For a little guy, you know, you'd think, gosh, I don't want to go in there and get my head taken off, but it doesn't bother him. He goes right at him. The 5'11 senior out of Mason City has a dozen points today. He averages 13 a game. He's a former Mr. Basketball in the state of Iowa. Led Mason City to two state championships. And it's now a 55-50 Penn State lead. We've played over five minutes in the second half. Oliver against Crispin. This is John Crispin. Finds his brother Joe in the corner. He's double teamed. Drives the baseline. Kick out to Ivory for three. And Henderson with the Iowa rebound. The long pass. Evans saved it and lost it. Here comes Ivory in the Nittany Lions. Ahead to John Crispin. Looks like that alley oop slipped a bit. Klein hurt. Boy, he just outfought everybody. Worley just cannot handle him. None of the freshmen here in the second half have been able to do anything with Klein Hurd. He's had it all his way offensively. Klein Hurd now ties Joe Crispin team high with 19. And a travel on the Hawkeyes. And once again, Penn State starting to take control. And Jossie Klein Hurd has been quite a story. Ten points this half. Well, he has been a power around the backboard. And I think this is by design. 
get the ball into Klein Hurd. Let's see if the freshman can stand the pressure down low. Thus far, they haven't been able to. Good coaching by Jerry Dunn and his stand. And Klein Hurd close to a double double. Titus Ivory got free. Kick out Tyler Smith for three. The pride of Lake Bluff, Illinois. And everybody chipping in. Penn State with its biggest lead, 60 to 50. Worley almost traveled. Had it blocked. Look at the hustle by Smith, but Iowa's basketball. One of the things you notice about freshmen is that when they go to the inside, they don't go as strong as they should. This is a great pass back outside. Smith just hangs around the three-point line. He knows what's going on, finds his spot, nails it. Iowa now down 10, their biggest deficit. Ryan Hogan, the transfer out of Kentucky with a basketball. Oliver, seven on the shot clock. Ivory all over Oliver. Oliver, tough shot, and he got the triple. Man, that was a great shot from the end. Little step back, like Joe Crispin, little step back jumper from three point. 16 for Oliver. Seven point Penn State lead. Crispin, it's almost outmatched what you can do. Well, we're seeing a show today, Bob. It is an offensive show right now. Both teams finding their strengths. Joe Oliver says, take that, Joe Crispin. Here comes Joe Crispin, ready to answer. Driving and fouled by Oliver. Second on Oliver, third on the Hawkeyes. I tell you what, Oliver and Crispin, they're well aware of each other, and there's a little pride at stake. I think both coaching staffs will be aware, though. You get two guys going after one another, you forget about the team, and that's not a good thing because Penn State has gotten to where they are by good, solid team play. What a nice step back jump shot, left hand, bang. Oh, that was pretty. Here he comes again, moving to the bucket. Wait, he has no fear. <laughs> Let me get in with the big guys. Of course, every point guard in the country wants to be a center. No question about that. Well, and now he gets a breather. And do you think being left-handed, how big an advantage is that, Bob? Uh, it's a definite advantage. Everybody's used to looking at right-handed players with the things they do, and it just doesn't look the same when the guy's out there shooting with the wrong arm. Bosco cut to the hoop. Crispin threw it behind him. Iowa's basketball with the Hawkeyes down seven. 12-23 left here in the second half. We've seen terrific three-point shooting today, and both these ball clubs can shoot the three as well as anybody. This is Wrecker trying to get by John Crispin. Nice dish down low. Worley fouled from behind. Bosco thought he had all ball. Worley mishandled the ball just momentarily, or he would have had an easy dunk. Great pass coming from Wrecker. See him just mishandled it for a second. Allows Bosco to get back in to make a defensive play. They said there was some contact on it, so they'll go to the free throw line. You can't convince 10,000 Nittany Lion fans that was a foul as Glenn Worley misses the first. Here's another look from down low. And there was some body contact. He was on the ball. No question about that, but a little body contact. Very hard to get away with a block from behind. And Mr. Basketball from a year ago in the state of Iowa hits the second. Jerry Dunn's Nittany Lions now lead by six. Watkins picked up the dribble. He's in trouble. John Crispin bails him out. Penn State leads 62-56. 17 on the shot clock. No Crispin now on the Penn State bench. This is his younger brother, John. And John, no, not a charge. A blocking foul on the Hawkeyes. And that'll go against Worley. And that'll be the third on Worley, the fifth on Iowa. So when we come back, Penn State maintains possession of the basketball, still leading by six. Attend every game, home and away, even though they know Jason probably won't play. They even went to Hawaii during the holidays when Iowa played there in the tournament. Jason may not be a superstar on the court, but he's got a 3.5 grade point average. He's a finance major, and mom and dad couldn't be prouder. 
not only that, but he's living his dream. Yep. It's exciting when you have kids like that that are great students, great individuals, and they get to live their dream. And Jason said, would I like to play more? Sure. But he goes, I couldn't be happier than what I've got going for me right now. Penn State leads by six, 11-20 left in the game. Tough off-balance shot, Ivory missed it. Run down by the freshman Brody Boyd. He's a native out of Duggar, Indiana, and on the other end, an injured Nittany Lion, Jossie Klein Hurd. He got hit in the eye as he was reaching in to try to get that rebound away from Evans. He caught a, looked like a finger in the eye. He immediately grabbed, and I can't remember whether it was right or the left, it looks like it's the right eye. And that really hurts. That's why you see a number of players wear goggles. You get poked in that eye enough. And Jossie Klein heard who's had a monster afternoon has to head to the Penn State bench. Here's a look. As they're reaching inside right there, the hand comes up and catches the eye. And he will go sit down for a few minutes. He'll be back. Penn State needs him. He is going to have a double-double today, scoring and rebound. Evans. He's getting a little frustrated, is he not, Bob? Double team there. He's trying to take the ball to the basket. Most of the time, he makes his move into the middle. That's easier to defend it than going to the baseline because the weak side forward can step in and clog. Evans averages 16 points, 13 rebounds a game. He's had a quiet day today, but how about that three from the freshman Brody Boyd, a prolific scorer in the state of Indiana. He's a little guy, but boy, did he make a big three there. Three-point Penn State lead. Smith, the kick out in the corner to Bosco. Vasco's in trouble. Good defense that time by Worley. Almost stolen by Vasco. Wrecker ahead to a wide open Hogan. A spot up three tie game. Just that quickly, the Hawkeyes find two three pointers from the outside. And holy smoke, we got a basketball game with just a little over 10 minutes left. And we've got a Penn State timeout. This game has lived up to its billing. Now we expected a terrific contest today, and we are tied at 62 with 10-19 to play here in the second half. Just moments ago, the Hawkeyes found a way to get the job done from the outside. Two quick three-pointers, and we got a tie ball game. It wasn't that long ago, Bob, that Penn State had a 10-point lead. In the first half as well, Penn State would sneak out to a nine-point lead, and then all yep. of a sudden, here would come Iowa back, cut it down, cut it down, cut it down, get it tied. Then the quick bucket at the end of the uh, half by Smith gave him that uh, two-point lead going into the locker room, and same thing happening all over again. Nine-point run for the Hawkeyes as we take a look at the BMW Ultimate Drive of the game. Nobody's any better at this than Dean Oliver as he protects himself with the right arm and with the left hand gets the easy bucket. Game deadlocked at 62. Penn State trying to stop the nine unanswered points by Iowa. Crispin missed it. His brother followed but missed. And Worley, another rebound for the freshman. Oliver finds Evans on the block, but Evans couldn't handle it. This is Evans again. Worley, nice fake, in traffic, scores, and puts the Hawkeyes up by two. Good play by Evans. Noticed that he was blocked, got the ball back out to Worley, who was triple teamed, but found a way to get it in the bucket. A 10-point lead, now a two-point deficit for Penn State, but Titus Ivory ties it with a nifty move inside. Hogan lucky there. He didn't get Carl for the block and have a three-point opportunity. He put a pretty good-sized bump on Ivory. For three, Brody boy. Well, the folks in the state of Indiana saw a lot of that. Out of Duggar, Indiana, Brody Boyd scored over 2,600 points in his high school career. Third all-time in the state of Indiana. Titus Ivory was bumped on the drive. It'll go against Ryan Hogan. Fifth foul on the Hawkeyes. Third on Hogan. Boyd is deadly from the outside, isn't he? Isn't he? Woo! And Iowa was saying in the shoot-around, he's really struggled with his shot, which can be expected for a freshman. But just like that, he's hit a couple of big ones here today. And with shooters like that, you get a couple down, and all of a sudden you begin to feel real comfortable with the basketball. 
Bob, look what the layup did for Luke Recker this half. It really got him off on a good start. Oh, nice move, but Ivory doesn't finish. And here come the Hawkeyes. Iowa leading 67-64. This is Boyd, who's hit the two long-range threes. The freshman takes another. Not that time. Worley with a great save, but into the hands of John Crispin. It's the Crispin brother break. John almost got picked. Boy, great hustle by Boyd, but it went out of bounds as he went sprawling in front of us. Brody Boyd. They list him at 5'11". That may be on his tiptoes. <laughs> Very well could be. Here's a look at the hustle play. He goes for it, and his foot just gets on the out-of-bounds line as he tries to save it. And all of a sudden, the Hawkeyes have become the aggressor. It's mm -hmm. been Penn State most of the afternoon, but now the Hawkeyes have found their game, and this is going to be a good one. And this is where it fell apart for Penn State Wednesday night in East Lansing. Joe Crispin, another miss. And again, Hogan on the break, and the layup makes it a five-point game. And caught in transition were the Nittany Lions. Iowa's biggest lead of the day. And another foul on the Hawkeyes, and that'll be the sixth team foul. And four on Ryan Hogan. Nice pass from Boyd down to Hogan, who makes a good catch, doesn't travel, and drops it into the bucket. And Penn State's gotten out of their offense. Yep. They're, they've gone one on one, and that will kill you, especially if the other team is on a run. Timeout called by Penn State. Ivory couldn't find anybody. And, Bob, this is shades of Wednesday night. A five-point Penn State lead at Michigan State with 12 minutes to play, up five, and lose by 25. That's how quickly that turned around. And you have to know that that's in the back of the mind of these Penn State players. Oh, no, here it comes again. They'll go back to their offense, get a couple of good offensive series, some buckets, and play solid defense. They'll be all right. But a couple of more quick downs where they don't get bucks, buckets are going to be in trouble. Well, we've got another ball game coming up following this one. We head to Evanston. Purdue takes on Northwestern. Wayne Larrabee and Sean Morris bring you all of the action. This the first week of the Big Ten campaign. And, Bob, a lot of great kids graduated from the Big Ten a year ago for the second year in a row. Two teams from the Big Ten in the Final Four. Michigan State, the national champs. A lot of people thought the Big Ten would suffer. You talk to coaches now, they say the Big Ten is every bit as strong this year as it's been the last couple of years. It's really a good conference, and we've got a lot of good young players coming in, which really speaks well for the, the recruiting and the fact that people really like to play in the Big Ten. Yep. Joe Crispin trying to get it going again. Good fake, drew the foul. He'll shoot the free throws. And that's what Crispin needs to do is get to the line because all of a sudden that outside shot has gone awry. Oliver anticipating the step back jump shot. It really doesn't happen as Crispin leans in and gets a couple of free opportunities for the effort. And now three personals on Dean Oliver. Joe Crispin has had a quiet second half for him anyway. 22 points in the game, six this half. 69-65, Iowa up. Just under eight minutes to play, and Crispin drains them both. So he has found that free throw shooting stroke today. Iowa will have the ball when we come back. The Hawkeyes have surged in front. Four personals, the final seven and a half minutes of this game. 71-68, Iowa. This is incredible. Penn State as a team came in 75% on the year, but today their free throw shooting has not been a strong point. Last couple of times missing the front end of one on one and ones when you're down three, you convert those and you're looking at having a one point lead here instead of a deficit. Penn State 15 of 22 at the line today. That registers at 68%, so well off what they normally shoot. And free throws may decide this baby. Titus Ivory now takes a seat with his fourth personal. 6.08 to play, Iowa up to 71-69. This is Reggie Evans who's had the quiet day. Luke Recker open for a moment. Oh, 
He's got it going now. That was a great shot, and consider the fact that his knee gave away on him on the, that second cut, and he still recovered and hit the shot. Crispin, the three, not there. Klein Hurd had it, lost it, picked up inside. Bosco was hammered by Evans, and Evans picks up his third personal. Now Luke Record has really got it, has gotten it going in the second half. He has 11 in the second half, 16 in the game. Getting physical on the inside. Let's watch some rebounding here on that last foul. Ball up in the air. Nice hustle by Klein Hurd. It's knocked away and the foul is committed. Bosco at the free throw line and he converts the front end. Actually, it's two shots at this point. Well, Bosco just four of five at the line all season. But he bags them both. And with 5.33 to play, Iowa leads 73-71. Ryan Hogan back in. Last time down, they set the offense up primarily for a wrecker as they're running him around picks, trying to get him open so he can get a good look at the bucket. Well, this is an offense he's comfortable with, Bob, because Steve Alford runs a lot of the same Indiana offense. And there you saw it. There, there it is. You know, the defense reacts to Wrecker. The opening is on the inside. Nice pass, easy bucket. And the freshman, Jared Reiner, gives Iowa a four-point lead. Crispin, he got a good look there, but was short on the shot. Hogan runs it down. Hogan now playing with four personals. Five minutes to go. Iowa with the ball in the four-point edge. This is where you find out how good a shape your ball club is in, especially your outshooters. See if they've got legs left. Oh, what a look. Record. Rainer missed the chippy. Same play we saw a moment ago with a different outcome. Crispin driving, overlaid it, Evans down with it, and as hot as Crispin was in the first half, it's turned around in the second half. Penn State's gone away from any offensive set, everything's one-on-one. -on -one. Reiner, the jumper, freshman missed again, look at Evans, out-rebound everybody, foul on the way up. We're getting glimpses of why Reggie Evans is such a special talent. Here's a guy out of Pensacola, Florida, just a real hustle play on the inside. Reiner with a jump. And look at him go after that ball. Just bodies fly when he goes up. He went to junior college out of Pensacola in Coffeyville, Kansas. Now, he was recruited by everybody coming out of junior college. And was asked, why didn't you go to Kansas or Kansas State since you're already there? And he said, two years in the state of Kansas is enough. He said, I was tired of seeing nothing but flat land. So he headed to Iowa City. And like there's no flat land and corn in <laughs> Iowa? <laughs> He's a good one, Bob. He is a dandy. Working on his free throws. Not a great free throw shooter, but he converts both of those. In fact, Jerry Dunn said, we're going to make Evans beat us at the line today. If he gets a shot in close, we're going to hammer him. Well, he made both there. Iowa has its biggest lead, 77 to 71. Nearing the four minute mark. Titus Ivory, nice move inside, but boy, Penn State can't finish anything. And Wrecker runs it down for the Hawkeyes. started to take control. Oliver feeds Evans. Evans, power move! Dunk and a foul! Oh my! Penn State had two defenders on him, and they both backed off and left him wide open. Then as they tried to come back and recover, he just said, no, fellas, we're going over the top, and slammed it. You see two guys step up, and then all of a sudden they back off. And you can't do that with Evans. He'll take you right to the iron. Wow. Ten points for Evans. Iowa has its biggest lead. And all of a sudden, Evans can do no wrong at the line. A 57% free throw shooter. He's made three in a row and made this dunk with authority. Iowa up nine. Penn State in big trouble now. The Nittany Lions had a 10-point lead this half. 
What has happened, Bob, as Iowa now leads by nine? I think Penn State has gone away from their offensive set. They were very successful early when they were getting the ball inside to Kleinhardt against the freshman. They went away from that. They've gone one-on-one. -on -one. Whoever catches the ball shoots it, and that will not work for them. It's uh, Michigan State all over again. Boy, and when you start losing games late, that can become a trend that is hard to stop. Penn State needs points now, and they need them quickly. This is Crispin. On the drive, drew the foul, and he'll shoot two. Joe Crispin with 23 points today. That moves him into the number two spot all time on the Penn State scoring list. That was a good, smart play by Crispin that time. Now, he took it one-on-one, -on -one, but look who's guarding him. There is no way Evans is going to be able to guard him. And so Crispin, with the smart move inside, little pump fake, gets back to the free throw line where he's deadly. And that's the fourth foul on Reggie Evans. And Crispin now with 24 points. As Steve Alford has a decision to make, do you keep Evans in there? Only Jesse Arnell has scored more points in the history of Penn State basketball. He had over 2,100. Joe Crispin, number two now, and he'll end up with close to 2,000 points when his Penn State career comes to an end in March. Seven-point Iowa lead, 3.20 to play. Hogan with four fouls with the ball to Oliver. Oliver's pass not handled by Worley, saved by record. 13 on the shot clock. This is Evans. Evans. Tough pass. It belongs to Penn State. Good defensive stand there. Hawkeyes have got to find a way to get uh, the, the ball out of Evans' hands when he's moving around. Here he is. He's not a great passer. This is not his forte, and he throws the ball out of bounds. The point guard's got to go get that ball. Oh, tough shot. But Crispin got it anyway. That's another one of those as a coach. You're like, no, 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 yes. Boy, if he heats it up now, it is going to be some kind of two minutes. 28 for Crispin. Four-point Iowa lead. Never loses confidence, does he, Bob? Great shooters do not lose confidence. They may miss 10 in a row, but they're saying, hey, I may hit the next 20. 10 on the shot clock. Evans to Worley. The freshman got a big hoop in the paint. Oh, is that freshman playing well? Nine for Worley. And a foul. Is that on Worley? If it is, he's out of there. I think they got Dean on the outside. He bumped Crispin going down the sideline. Just a good, smart move. Number four on Oliver. He's got to stay in the ball game for him oh. as well. I mean, it's like there's nobody out there that either team can do without. Here's a look a moment ago. There's that step back jump shot. Mm. Bang. Crispin to shoot two. He now has 29. And now Oliver, Hogan, Evans, and Worley all on the floor for Iowa with four personal fouls. Bob, you were telling me you played with a guy that was similar in some ways to Joe Crispin, maybe the best ever in the Big Ten as a guard. Rick Mount could shoot the basketball, and I tell you what, when he was on, you just gave him the ball and got out of the way. One ball, that's all he's got one out two. Today's Big Ten game has been brought to you by BMW. Test drive the ultimate driving machine at your local BMW center. 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. Bex, a beer apart. Cooper Tires, a lot of mileage for the money. Cooper Tires, drive on. Chevrolet, Chevy, we'll be there. And by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Terrific game from the Bryce Jordan Center in State College. The opening week of Big Ten basketball with Bob Ford, I'm Tom Hamilton. 2-19 to play. Iowa with the ball and a four-point lead. 82-78. Oliver against Crispin. This is Hogan against the other Crispin. He gets rid of it in a hurry. Oliver for three. Not there. Big rebound. Jesse.
Casey Klein Hurd, who's had a double-double today. And Penn State down four with a ball. And Crispin bumped by Worley. Worley fouls out. Crispin will shoot two. Crispin is so smart with the basketball, looking for opportunities to get to the free throw line, looking for somebody to, to bump him. Right there, he tried to get it on Oliver, didn't get the call, comes back outside. There's the double team and the reach in by Worley. Freshman mistake puts Crispin back at the free throw line. And Crispin is 11 of 11 at the line, but that man, number four, you're going to hear a lot more about Glenn Worley out of Iowa City, Mr. Basketball in the state of Iowa a year ago, won state championships as a sophomore and a senior. As a sophomore in high school, he got a free throw with no time left to win the state title. But he is unhappy now leaving this game. And look at the difference at the charity stripe. Complete reversal of the way it normally is for Iowa. Penn State has done a nice job of getting the ball in the right spots at the right time. People have been committing fouls. And a lot of that, the freshmen will commit some fouls that you don't ordinarily expect. But guys like Crispin have been so smart in terms of putting themselves in a position to get fouled when they needed the two points. Crispin, 11 of 11 at the line, has 30 points. He'll shoot two. It's now 82-79, Iowa, 142 to play. And kids, if you want to be a great shooter, see if you can copy this form. It's almost perfect, isn't it, Bob? He doesn't do anything wrong with the basketball. Very smooth. In sync all the time. 32 for Crispin, 13 of 13 at the line. And now the Nittany Lion fans trying to become a factor. Hogan. This is Wrecker. Wrecker on the baseline with a left hand mystery. Layup. Out of bounds off Evans. What a move by Wrecker, but couldn't get the left handed layup to go down. The Hawkeyes looked for their leadership, their older players, and did a nice job of getting the ball to the basket. And Evans almost got that rebound. Crispin for the tie. Nope, passes it up. Smith ties the game. How many times today has Smith been in the right spot to get the big bucket for Penn State? The Bryce Jordan Center. Not the noisiest building in the Big Ten, but it has really come to life now. Their senior classic in week one of the Big Ten. Here's a look. Smith with that easy little jump shot. He's hit a couple of big three-pointers, and there's one right from the corner of the free-throw lane. The deadlock this one at 82, and man, oh, man, this has been a great comeback by Penn State and a big comeback for them because of what happened to them at Michigan State. Great point, Bob, and you had just mentioned coming out of the last break, Penn State had gotten away from the team play, but now they're on this run, and it's been spearheaded by Joe Crispin. Yeah, he's done a good job of getting to the free throw line in a couple of situations where they needed two points. Excellent free throw shooter, and then they've gone back to a little bit more motion and better passing and looking for the open people and Smith there with with a great position as he nailed that jumper maybe a future Nittany Lions star right there enjoying this one folks it's just week one in what will be another special Big Ten basketball season 82 82 105 to play becomes redundant but every coach tells you the same thing you just look at your Big Ten schedule and you say there aren't any gimmies you've got to be ready every time you, you come out of the shoot or somebody's going to get you it doesn't matter whether you're at home or on the road you've got to strap them up and be ready to go hold on folks this should be some kind of finish Oliver against Crispin record for the lead Wrecker got another big hoop. What a second half by Luke Wrecker. Great offensive set coming out of the uh, huddle as they find a way to get him off of a pick. Crispin triple team found Ivory. Iowa leads by two, 42 seconds left. Ivory the drive and the foul, offensive foul. Ivory is out of the ball game. And that's a huge blow to the Nittany Lions. Unlike the move he made a moment ago, right there, pull up and take the jump shot. 
Boy, that, that calls a tough one for, for Ivory. He's slicing across. It looks like he's in position to draw the foul. The official says it goes the other way. And he will go to the bench, and the Hawks get a big, big break. Ooh. And a nice play defensively by the freshman, Jared Reiner, who stepped in there to take the charge. That's one of those calls. Half the crowd that's watching today loved it. The other half thought it was awful. You can't win when you're an official because that's maybe the most difficult call to make in basketball. So Iowa will have the ball in the lead with 40 seconds left. And B.J. Bosco to replace Titus Ivory. So now Penn State goes with the Crispins, Kleinherd, Bosco, and Smith. Iowa counters with Hogan, Boyd, Wrecker, Oliver, and Evans. Wrecker says, I'll bring it up myself. Tendonitis and all. What a second half Wrecker has had. 18 points in the game. 22 on the shot clock. There's about a four second difference between the shot and game clock. Oliver almost fouled by Crispin. Nice look. Evans missed the dunk. Crispin runs it down with 12 seconds left. Crispin on the run for the lead. No. Tipped up and in and out. Tipped up again. Two seconds left. Iowa's ball with 1.3 seconds left. Wow. What a set of action there as the Hucks battling trying to get that rebound but Penn State would not be denied on the backboard as they knocked it up there a couple of times nearly got the roll but the Hawkeyes get it back 1.3 wow well they got three shots off Bob in those 12 seconds Crispin went for the lead with a three there's a look at the shot from the outside that first one may have come a little quick a lot of bodies flying around on the inside as Evans trying to get the rebound for the Hawkeyes. Knocked Kleinherd down. The ball goes tri trickling out of bounds. And it'll be Iowa basketball. Probably see a quick foul here. And Luke Recker is our Chevrolet player of the game. He has 18 points. And his second half has really been a turnaround. 13 of the 18 in the second half. And who were they looking for? No question the wrecker was the guy that they were going to go to. And a timeout, a foul before the ball can be inbounded, so no time off the clock. Well, let's take a look at our advanced auto parts play of the game. The best part is our people. Well, this is just a great move by Recker. He came off of a double pick low as the Hawkeyes forced to switch because Ivory was guarding him on the other side, or rather Kleinhardt had a hold of him on the other side, and they had to switch off of him, gave him just a little bit of an opening, and you don't give Recker an opening. Nope. And now he gets two free throws on the double bonus. Recker. Maybe he had some jitters in that first half. His return to the Big Ten. He has 19 points. Five at the break. And that should do it. Now a two-possession game, 86 to 82 Iowa. 1.3 seconds remaining. And what a huge road win this will be for Steve Alford and the Hawkeyes. Just a giant win and for Penn State, a real tough loss after making a great comeback. You know, we talked about at the beginning of the game, it was going to be Wrecker and Crispin, and it has been right down here at the end. Crispin doing the job with the passes and the three-pointers and the free throws, but it was Wrecker when it came down to crunch time that Iowa went to twice, and he got both jumpers down. And again, Iowa finding a way to win a close game, Bob. This would be their fifth win of the year by four points or fewer. And there's something about winning and losing close games, isn't there? It's amazing how it comes to a ball club where you have years where the, you get in those tight ball games and you win and you win and you win and, you, and it's catching. And then you'll come another year, two years down the road, and you'll get in a ball game and you couldn't win one for anything. It really does become mental. Crispin with 32 points takes one from half court. with 35, but it was one point shy of 
of what Penn State needed. The Iowa Hawkeyes have held on to beat the Penn State Nittany Lions 86 to 85 for Bob Ford. This is Tom Hamilton. So long from State College.